Okay. Let's start. <clears throat> okay. Let's start. Can you go to YouTube? Tapos i-link mo yung current na nagla-live sa page. May nagla-live eh. Sa page. Go to YouTube muna. Nakita mo? sa page. May nagla-live eh. Okay, let's start for real sa page. Go to YouTube. Kikita na ba yung PowerPoint? Hmm? Anyone? Okay. Okay, nag... Alright. Let's right. talk about radical expressions today. So, first, what are radical expressions? Do you? Algebraic expression natin that contain a variable or variables with a rational exponent. Okay, so hindi included dito kapag yung rational, what do we mean when we say rational exponent? Tay mga one half, two thirds, three fourths, okay? Excluding yung mga exponents natin na integers in short, okay? So an example is this one, x raised to one half. You have your irrational exponent, one half. In radical form naman, it's going to be square root of x. So in a radical expression, or may, uh, in a radical expression, meron tayong a raised to n. If meron tayong a raised to n equal to r, if we get the value of a, makukuha natin that a is equal to r raised to 1 half, uh, 1 over n, or equal to this one, n root of r. Okay, so yan yung tinatawag natin radical expression, this one. We have the index here, okay, or yung denominator ng iyong um, rational exponent ating radical sign mo, this one, and then yung nasa loob ng radical sign mo is called your radican. So, anong pagbasa natin dito? Nth root of r. Okay, so kung meron tayong ganito, um, dapat uh, non-zero and real numbers yung radican natin. Okay? Otherwise, undefined siya. And yung ating m and n are integers. Okay?
yung radicand mo has a factor that is a perfect nth power. So ano ibig sabihin ng perfect nth power? But wala ko whiteboard. Oh my. Ang labo, wala kong whiteboard for license. Wala. Anyway, I'll just annotate it. Pag sinabi mo perfect nth power, for example, pag meron kang ganito, ano yung um, index mo dito? Meron kang imaginary 2, right? Automatically. So, ang 2 mo, kapag i-express mo siya as a power prime factor, that's just equal to 2 raised to 1. Okay? So, itong 2 raised to 1, is it a perfect second or square power ng 2? Ay ng... Uh, ang 2 raised to 1 ba is a perfect square? Hindi. Okay? So, hindi mo na ito simplify. So, how about if you have something like cube root of 8? This is equal to, kapag ginawa natin yung power prime factor, if naalala nyo pa, 2 raised to 3. Okay? Itong 2 raised to 3 is a perfect cube or yung 8 is a perfect cube. Ano ibig sabihin ng ano, has a factor that is a perfect nth power. So for example naman, meron tayong um, square root of cube root of 16. Cube root of 16, that's equal to 2 raised to 4. Right? Anong factors ng 2 raised to 4? 2 cube and 2. Okay, so meron siyang... Ano nangyari? Okay, so sorry. Minapindot ako. Um, so ito, meron kang factor dito na... perfect nth power, 2 raised to cube. Later, mas marami pa mga example. So, mas magigets niya. Hindi na bubura yung annotations. Okay. So, before we move on sa operations, um, let's just discuss yung mga exponent rules natin. So, dadaanan ko lang to kasi may version naman nito for rational exponents. Actually, ito lang, the same concept siya. Ito lang mas general. So if you have x raised to m times x raised to n, basta pareho yung base, i-add mo lang yung exponent, right? The same goes sa uh, quotient rule. Basta pareho yung base, isa-subtract mo lang, okay? Power of a power rule. So kapag meron kang x raised to m and yung buong power na yun ay merong exponent, i-multiply mo lang yun sa exponent ng original power mo. Okay? So you have x raised to m times a. What else? Power of a product rule and power of a quotient rule. So basically, dinistribute mo lang itong a o yung power niya sa labas to the individual exponents. Ganun lang rin dito sa quotient rule. So sa denominator, ay sa numerator and sa denominator, didistribute mo siya. So kapag pinagsama natin yung concept ng or yung idea ng power of a product rule and product rule, kapag meron kang parehong base, kasi kanina magkaiba ha. Okay? So kapag specifically magkapareho yung bases mo, um, apply lang yung power of a product rule here and then since pareho yung base, you can just add yung exponents nila. Ganun din with power of a quotient rule and quotient rule. Okay? Okay, mali dito. <laughs> Hindi ko na-edit. This should be x pareho. Okay, take note guys. Dapat pareho yung base dito. Okay. Now, tinan na natin yung version niya kapa... Ay, ito pa pala. Negative power rule. So, kapag meron kang negative exponent, ibig sabihin lang nun, gagawin mo siyang reciprocal 
or sorry, gagawin mo siyang nasa denominator and then positive of the exponent. Okay, so power of a power, the same lang to sa kanina, except this time you have a rational um, exponent. Your rational exponent, 1 over n, ito, imagine nyo, ito yung letter A kanina. I-multiply mo lang siya sa M. So, if you multiply this to this one, ang M mo is the numerator and then ang denominator mo is kung ano yung nandito, which is N. X raised to M over N. So, ito na yung magiging exponent niya. Meron kang um, rational exponent na M over N. So, another way of writing this one, itong nasa taas, is itong nasa baba. Okay? Kung saan itong denominator mo, siya yung index mo, right? Remember from the definition ng radical expression. So here we have nth root of x raised to m. This is just equal to itong nasa taas din. Kasi basically itong um, naka-exponent form, ginawa lang natin siyang radical form. How about here? Ganun lang rin. Okay? Eh, uh, pero, pinapakita niya lang na let's say, uh, meron kang variable x raised to n, and then kukunin mo yung nth root nun, magka-cancel out lang kung bagay yung effect nila, and you will get x raised to 1, or simply x. Kasi, di ba, multiply mo tong 1 over n dito sa n, magka-cancel lang sila, magiging 1. Okay. Power power of a product rule. So kapag meron kang ganito, i-distribute mo ito, itong 1 over n, right? You will have x raised to 1 over n times y raised to 1 over n. So as you can see, if may pareho kang index, n here and n here, kunwari given ka nitong nasa right side, pwede mo siyang masimplify by multiplying yung radicand niya x times y. Okay? So if you're getting the nth root of quantity x times y, that's just equal to nth root of x times nth root of y. Puro tayo. Pero sana nagigas yung nakoconnect yung sa concept natin or sa lessons natin on exponents. So power of a quotient, pareho sa kanina, ito, i-distribute mo lang sa denominator as a numerator and denominator mo. So you'll have this one. In radical form, if you have nth root of x over y, equal lang yun sa nth root of x over nth root of y. Okay? So take note na pareho yung index mo dito. Okay. So pareho rin kapag meron kang negative power, Ito, mapupunta lang siya sa denominator. And then, absolute value no original. One raised to any number will give you one, right? So, gawin natin na yung one natin dito. Okay, gawin natin na yung one natin dito is... 1 raised to n then. So ilalabas natin itong 1 raised to n and 1 raised to n, we will get this 1. Okay? Parang ito naman yung quotient rule mo, right? Okay. So pagdating naman sa product rule mo, guys, kanina sa power of a product rule and power of a quotient rule, yung index mo yung magkapareho, ha? Dito naman, pag yung basis mo are equal and you're multiplying um, two radicals or two uh, expressions with rational exponents, ito, rational exponents, if you're gonna multiply them, ikakopy mo lang yung base, then raise to the sum of exponents nila. So same na same yung concept. In radical form, okay, as you can see, pareho yung base, yung base dito magiging yung radicand dito kapag nasa radical form. So yung radical form mo are the same here, x and x. Kapag ganun, 
ito yung formula. Pero ako, I suggest, um, isipin nyo na lang siya na or i-convert yung muna to rational expression. Kung baga, ito yung gagamitin natin. Mas madali, di ba, instead of this. Although the same lang naman yan sila. Okay? Mamaya na tayo magsagot ng examples. Okay, so similarly, ganun lang rin naman yung concept sa quotient rule when pareho yung basis mo, but this time, magsasubtract ka. Okay? So in, um, ano ang tawag dito? Okay, mali na naman yung PowerPoint. Um, dito naman, magsasubtract ka. So, pareho lang naman to guys. But, I suggest, ang gamitin ulit is yung naka-rational exponent instead of using yung may mga radical sign. Okay? Now, let's um, mag-examples tayo. Bakit wala akong whiteboard? Hindi ka mag -gets. Hindi mag examples ko. May nagtanong kasi sa YouTube, pabagal daw. Um, dinadaanan ko lang para medyo familiar na kayo. Pero mag examples tayo isa-isa. Isa. Ang problema ko ngayon, wala tayo. Wala tayong whiteboard. So hindi ko alam. Anong gagawin ko? Bakit walang whiteboard? Balik na lang ba tayo sa old account? Guys, mag-chat kayo. Balik na lang ba tayo sa old account kasi doon may whiteboard pero hindi only time. What do you think? And hindi ko makakonect sa YouTube. Last yung whiteboard eh. Um, wait lang. Hirap na naman yun. Nag-open lang ako ng app sa laptop kasi wala nga whiteboard. Okay. Let's use this one instead. So, yung una natin itatry would be, kasi wala naman sumasagot sa akin. Um, let's try transforming yung radical expressions or in radical form to um, rational exponent. If we have square root of 4 cube, hindi tayo nagsisimplify dito. So, ignore nyo muna if hindi siya simplify. In radical exponent, ano ito? 4 raised to, ito siya yung numerator. Okay? Yung power yung numerator. And then yung denominator mo would be your index or yung something root. Okay? Square root, nth root, Five, uh, fifth root, etc. So in this case, 4 raised to 3 over 2. How about this one? Sixteen raised to one third. This is equal to. Ay, sorry. Balik. Okay, how about if yung tinatanong is cube root of 161? In rational exponent form, ito ay 161 raised to 1 over 3. Okay? So, yun lang naman. Um, since wala siya exponent, automatically may imaginary 1 ka dyan. 
siya yung magiging numerator mo. And itong index mo, siya yung denominator mo. Okay? Paano naman kapag uh, baliktad? So if we have rational exponent, tapos gusto natin siyang gawing in radical form, x, kung may remind tayo, x raised to 1 half, this is just equal to, again, ito yung maging exponent, yan yung exponent niya, or yung power niya, x raised to 1, and then ito yung index niya, or 2. Or simply, square root of x. How about this one? If we have Ano ba yan? Baliktad yung isip ko. 2 raised to 1 third x 2 thirds. This is equal to pareho naman silang cube root. So pwede natin silang ipag sama. Okay? 2 raised to 1 and x squared or cube root of 2 x Squared. Okay? How about if meron kang something like x squared y cube z raised to 1 over 5. This is just going to be equal to, so since quantity naman, lahat sila nasa loob ng radical sign natin. Fifth root of x squared y cube z. Okay? So, ano ba yan? Hindi ako sanay na wala. White point. Okay. Um, try to answer this one. Mabilis lang. Okay, mabilis lang. Chat done kapag tapos na. May nagsasagot ba? Are you guys answering? If not, sagutan na natin. Okay. So this is equal to 7. Ano ito radical sign? Ay, sorry. Three eighths. This one, that's x cubed 8 root why? Okay? Pero paano to properly sinusulat? Hinuhuli mo yung merong radical sign. So that it should be written as 7y 8th root of x cubed. How about this one? Yung 2 ba kasama sa, two ra uh, sa raised to 2 fifths? Hindi. So nasa labas lang siya, no? Radical sign. Okay? Our root would be 5 or ang index natin is 5. Okay, and then itong 2, that would be x, y, quantity pa rin sila, squared. Or 2 times 5th root of x squared, y squared. 
How about this one? Sorry, wala pala kang instructions. Iko-convert na lang siya to the other form. So this one, that's just 21 raised to 1 over 3. How about the last one? X raised to 3, ito yung numerator, over the root, which is 4. Pangat pala na sulat ko. But this should, this should have been fourth root. Okay? Now, balik muna tayo sa PowerPoint. Okay. So, simplifying radical expression. So, para masimplify natin. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Nagula ako. Simplifying radical expressions, again, kagaya na sinabi kanina, we can simplify a radical expression kapag yung na... N, or itong root. Okay? Kaya, kaya siya divisible by N kasi perfect nth power siya. So now let's, I'll show you some examples. So for example, if we have okay, let's assume it's the basic square root of 16. Okay. What are the factors of 16? Okay, one way to do this, um, this one is easy because alam natin 4 times 4 is equal to 16. Pero step by step, um, para sure na makita mo lahat, Power prime factor. Bakit power prime yung ginagamit ko? Um, kasi later on, kapag may mga x, y, z na tayo, etc. So power prime factorization yung gagawin natin. So in this case, um, ang power prime factorization ng 16, I'm assuming na marunong na kayo, it's 2 raised to 4. Okay? So, ang gagawin dito would be to group itong magre-regroup tayo such that ito is either equal to this or divisible. Okay? So, bahala na kayo kung ano mas madali sa inyo. Um, if i-regroup natin yan, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 2 cube, lahat ng group na pareho ito at ito, malalabas natin siya. Kasi remember, if we have this one, this is just equal to x. So, malalabas natin dito ang 2 and then another 2, so that's 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. Okay, now let's try other examples. Kasi madali lang yan. How about if we have cube root of 16? Okay? Ang power prime, power prime factors nito would be, kagaya kanina, 2 raised to 4. So, ang goal natin is mag-group natin siya such that meron tayong dalawang ganito. Uh, ganito ko siya ginagawa if nagsusulat ako ng solution ko talaga. Um, what I do is, iahati ko siya such that meron akong 2 raised to 3 and 2 raised to 1. Okay, ang goal ko is ito divisible by 3 and then yung nasa kabilang side would be yung Remainder, if I divide this one by 3. So 4 divided by 3, that's equal to 1. So ilalagay ko dito yung 2 raised to 1. And then, remember our, our product rule na if meron kang parehong base, um, our product rule na kapag meron kang parehong base, here, if you multiply them, i-add mo lang yung exponent niya. Okay? Kaya ganun ko siya hinati. 2 raised to 1 and 2 raised to 3. Okay? So this one, pwede natin siya masimplify kasi equal lang to. So this is just equal to 2 times this one which is cube root of 2 raised to 1 or simply 2 ra uh, times cube root of 
two. Okay, alam ko madali lang to guys. Pinapakita ko lang step by step para pag may variables tayo, magigets nyo. Okay. How about if we have this example? Fourth root of 25 over 16. Um, by quotient rule, pwede natin tong isulat. Ay, sorry, power of a quotient rule, pwede natin siya isulat this way, right? Okay? Itong nasa taas, anong power prime factor nito? 5 squared lang, di ba? So, alam natin na hindi na natin masisimplify itong nasa taas. How about itong nasa baba? We know na ang prime factors ng 16 would be 2 raised to 4. Now, these two are equal. So, we can simplify this to 4th root of 25 over 2 or 1 half 4th root of 25. Okay. Now, let's deal with examples na merong um, variables. If we have 256 x cubed y raised to 7 and then we're going to get the cube root of that. Okay, may two ways tayo to solve this one. Pwedeng gawin mo siyang um, rational expression or pwedeng i-power prime mo na to agad. So here we have Anong power prime factors nito? 256, that's actually 2 raised to 8. Okay? Times x cubed times y raised to 7. Now, hatiin mo siya ulit sa perfect nth root. Dito yung mga perfect nth root. And dito naman yung mga remainder. Quote and quote remainder. So to get a perfect nth uh, nth root or in this case, perfect cube. Ano yung perfect cube na makukuha mo dito? 2 raised to 6 and 2 raised to cube. etong 2 raised to 6. So kumbaga, yung exponent mo dapat is divisible by this one. Tapos yung remainder niya would be sorry, 2. Would be dito. 2 raised to 2. How about this one? X cube is a perfect cube. So dito mo siya ilalagay. How about Y raised to 7? y raised to 6 and y raised to 1 or simply y. So dito yung y raised to 6 and dito naman yung y raised to 1 or just y. This one, masisimplify mo, you have 2 squared x y squared times cube root, sorry, cube root of 4y. So ito na yung final answer natin. 4 x y squared times cube root of 4y. Nakuha ba kung paano ito ginagawa? Kaya ako sinusulat ng hiwalay. Dito ko nilalagay lahat ng mga perfect cube kasi 3 ito. Tapos dito naman sa kabila yung mga butal niya. O kaya yung mga um, ano tawag dito? remainder niya. Okay? So how about another example? Ay, yung another method pa pala. Um, yung other method would be kapag mas comfortable lang kayo na isulat siya sa rational expression. Pero gagawin nyo pa rin to. Kapag mas comfortable lang kayo, gagawin nyo pa rin yan. 2 raised to 8 x cubed times y raised to 7. Raised to 1 third. Okay? Quantity yan. So lahat sila. And then, Ang gagawin would be to divide them such that makakancel mo itong 3. So actually, essentially, the same lang talaga siya. 2 raised to 6, ang may e1 is 2 raised to 2. Kung baga, 2 raised to, uh, 2 raised to 8 divided by 2 raised to 6 is equal to 2 raised to 2. x cubed divisible siya by 3. So, x cubed na dyan. Ito, para maging divisible by 3, ihiwalay natin yung y raised to 1. Iwan ka with y raised to 6. So, pareho yan sila may one-third, one-third. 
Okay, so what you're going to do is distribute mo yan. So 2, 6 over 3, x, 3 over 3, y, 6 over 3 times this 1. As since hindi naman sila divisible by 3, wag na nating i-distribute. So this one becomes 2 raised to 2 or 4. Ito magiging x na lang. Ito magiging 2. Times this 1. And then, ano bang proper way of writing? Sinusulat siya as a radical form. So, cube root of 2 squared or 4 y. Okay? So, save lima ko mong sagot. Or pwede rin, yung iba ginagawa nila is to distribute this one. Tapos, yung fraction nila, ginagawa nilang, um, ano tawag dito? Parang, for example, 2, 8 thirds, x, 3 over 3, y, 7 over 3. So, ito gagawin nilang um, mixed, pero I don't think gusto nyo yung ganun. 2 raised to 2 thirds x and then y raised to 1 and 2 thirds. So, ito yung nagiging, ito yung mga nalala. Tapos ito yung 1. Pero mas nakakalito siya. So, huwag yun ang gawin niya. Okay, now let's answer some more examples. Or kay na lang para hindi kayo mabor. So usually naman, pag sa exam nito, most probably you're just gonna deal with um, square root. So yun lang yung practice natin. Most and then on ting ibang exponents. Try to answer. So simplify lang ito mga nandito. Hi, let's answer. So guys, um, hindi nyo kailangan na i-express siya always as a prime factor if kaya nyo nang isipin kung ano yung perfect, um, perfect nth root na meron. So in this case, for example, itong 48, alam naman natin divisible siya by 4, right? 
And at the same time, divisible din siya by 16. So, pwede natin siya express as 4 squared, which is 16. 48 divided, divided by 16, that's equal to 3. So 4 squared times 3. And then we have times x cubed times x ito, times y raised to 4 times y. Okay, so mga pwedeng ilabas natin dito? That would be ito, this one, and this one. Square root of 4 squared, that's equal to 4. Square root of x squared, that's equal to x. Um, square root of y raised to 4. So 4 divided by 2, that's equal to y squared. Times, ano yung mga natira? 3, x, and y. So 3, x, y. How about here? 64. Ano ang factors ng 64 natin? Ang 64 natin is divisible by um, 4 cubed siguro ito. Yeah, 4 cubed. This is equal to 4 cubed or since square root ito, perfect square, square yung hinanap natin. 4 raised to 2 times 4. Itong x raised to 9, hatiin natin siya sa x raised to 8 times x raised to 1. Okay? So, ano yung mga malalabas natin sa radical sign? Ito, tsaka ito. So, that's equal to square root of 4 squared. That's equal to 4. Square root of x raised to 8. That's x raised to 8 over 2 or 4 times 4x. Ay, sorry. Squared nga pala to. Okay, meron pa tayong pwede ilabas. This one, since perfect square din siya. So, dito lang natin. 4 times, what's the square root of 4? That's 2. Ang bobo ka naman. 8 squared kasi, shy. Anyway, pareho pa rin naman yung magiging sagot. X raised to 4 times square root of x. So the final answer is 8x raised to 4 times x. How about this one? Negative. Magkakaroon mo tayo ng complex number? Wala. Kasi odd number itong root mo. So ilalabas mo lang yung negative sign yan. Kasi uh, magkakaroon ka lang ng i kapag meron kang square root of something na negative tapos yung n mo dito is an even number. Okay? Pero since odd ito, pwede mo na ilabas yung i. i yung 1, sorry. Yung negative. Negative 1. Kasi isipin nyo, kunwari meron kang negative, negative 1. Ano ang cube root nito? This is equal to negative 1 cube. Or negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. It's equal to negative 1. So as long as odd naman yung nandito mo, hindi, ka, um, hindi siya magiging i or complex number. Okay, so here meron tayong negative fifth root of 64. So from earlier, that's 8 squared. Or, paano, paano natin mga, kasi 5 to, so medyo malaki. Itong 64, that's equal to 8 squared. Ang 8 natin, that's equal to 2 raised to 3 raised to 2. So, ang 64 is equal to 2 raised to 6 kasi mumultiply mo yan sa 3. 2 raised to 6. So, here we have 2 raised to 6 times A raised to 4 times B raised to, eto mahati natin, 5 B raised to 2. Okay, so ano yung mga malalabas natin? At yung papala natin to, we have 2 raised to 5 and then 2 raised to 1. So mga malalabas natin would be this one and this one. This is equal to negative 2 raised to 5 times B. 
two lang pala. Kasi fifth root of two raised to five. So magka-cancel yung five, lalabas mo yung two. Kung may iwan sa loob would be two, a raised to four, b squared. Don't forget yung negative sign. Okay, how about here? This is equal to negative 2. Um, 48, ano yung ano natin dyan? We have same sa kanina. Ang 48 is 4 squared times 3 a raised to 4. Perfect square siya. So, okay na yan. B squared, perfect square din siya. Itong C cube, pwede natin siyang hatiin sa C squared and C. So, ano mga pwede ilabas natin dito? Take note, may negative 2 ka na dyan initially. Ito, pag ilabas natin, that's equal to 4 squared of 4 squared is equal to 4. May iwan to. Ito malalabas natin, A squared. Ito malalabas natin, magiging B. Ito malalabas natin, magiging C. Times, ano yung mga naiwan? 3 and itong C. If this is equal to negative 8 A squared BC times square root of 3C. Okay, how about this one? Yung 75 ba, ano yung factors niya? 5 squared times 3. So actually, irrelevant siya kasi hindi na natin siya malalabas. M, hindi natin malalabas. Um, P raised to 9. Ang 9 is divisible by 3. So, perfect cube yan. And Q raised to 6 para maging divisible by 3 times Q raised to 1. So, yung mga malalabas natin dito? Ito lang. Yung P and Q. It's going to be equal to um, cube root of P raised to 9. That's equal to P raised to 3. Guys, dinidivide 2 by 3 ha. Hindi siya kinukuna ng cube root yung exponent. Okay? Dinidivide siya by yung root na nasa labas. Q squared times, eto 75 lang din yan. Kasi hindi naman nagbago. M Q. So in case lang na may mga malalaking number para kumanghula kayo um, you have to check yung last digit niya. So kunwari yung last digit niya is 1 Ano ba yung pwede magbigay ng last digit na 1? Yung sum root niya na nag-end din dapat sa 1 or 9. Kasi 9 times 9 is equal to 81. Last digit is 1. Kaya kapag magmultiply ka ng dalawang num ng number to itself, ito yung mga pattern niya. Okay? Um, if meron kang last digit na 4, ang roots niya may last digit na 2 and or 8. Hindi end ha, either sa dalawa. So, it will give you a rough estimate or guess kapag sa mga square root. Pag 5, pag yung last digit mo is 5, ang consider mo lang yan is nag end din sa 5. With 6, it could either be 4 or 6. Kasi 4 times 4, that's equal to 16. So, ang last digit is 6. Um, 6 times 6, ang last digit is 6. Kapag 9 naman yung last digit, it's either 3 yung last digit ng square root mo or... 7. Kapag 0, 0 din. So, ito medyo hindi, hindi, ako personally hindi ko na to minemorize. Pero para lang may idea kayo. Kapag for example, meron kang um, meron kang kukunan ng square root. Kasi yun yung common, ba? So, for example, if you have 216 
Ay, hindi, hindi pala siya perfect square. Okay, hindi tayo mga example doon. Okay, so when, when we are adding or subtracting radicals, we only add or subtract like radicals. Pag sinabi natin like radicals, ito yung may the same radicand and index. Okay? For example, itong nasa taas, we have square root of x plus 2 times square root of x. Okay, so yung radicand Radical mo dito is itong square root of x na part and itong square root of x na part. So, pwede mo silang i-add. May imaginary 1 ka dito, 1 plus 2, that's equal to 3 square root of x. How about itong nasa baba? Meron kang square root of 5 and square root of 5. Pareho silang may index na 2, imaginary 2 dito niyan sa taas, kasi square root, and then pareho yung radical nila na 5. So, pwede mo silang i-add. You will get... Um, 6 square root of 5. Okay? So, kapag hindi naman magkapareho yung radical mo, like this one, we have 3 and 12, pwede mo siyang i-transform into um, like radicals. Paano? By, ang gagawin mo is, is simplify mo yung either sa dalawa. Pero in this case, ang simplify mo dapat is itong 12 kasi mas malaki siya. So, kailangan mo ma-reduce itong nasa loob into a radical na 3 lang yung nasa loob. Okay? So, simplify to combine like, like radicals. Pwedeng pareho mo silang kailangan i-simplify. Pwedeng isa lang. In this case, ito. Kasi ito, prime naman na yan. Eh. So, paano mo pa yung isi-simplify, di ba? Itong 12 equal lang siya sa 4 times 3. Itong 4 is a perfect square. So, pwede natin siyang ilabas. Makukuha natin 2 square root of 3. Now we can add or subtract this. Ang makuha natin is 5 square root of 3. Okay? So let's try to answer some. That's 3 square root of 20 minus 8 square root of 5. Cube root of 3x plus cube root of 81x. 3 times cube root of 3 plus 2 times cube root of 27. Sagutan natin to. Okay. This one, ano yung pwede mong simplify dito? Ito, right? So let's simplify that one. This one, that's gonna be equal to four times five. This is a perfect square, so pwede natin ilabas. We will have three times Square root of 4, that's equal to 2. Square root of 5. Minus, ito simplified na yan. Okay? So here we have 6 square root of 5 minus 8 square root of 5. Final answer is negative 2 square root of 5. Okay, how about here? Ito yung pwede natin masimplify. This is equal to Three raised to four x. Okay, and since cube ito, ang malalabas ng natin is isang th three 
or yung 3 cube and may iwan tayo ng 3 raised to 1. Okay, this is equal to 3 cube times 3 times x. So ito lang yung malalabas natin dyan kasi cube root yung hinahanap. So this is going to be equal to, which is tama naman kasi kailangan natin ng 3x. So that's another clue. So here we will have cube root of 3x, okay, tapos plus 3 times cube root of 3x. So our final answer is going to be 4 cube root of 3x. How about this one? Ito, pwede natin siya simplify itong nasa loob. This is equal to 3 cube. So cube root of 3 cube, that's equal to 3. So ito magiging equal to 3 lang. We will have <laughs> 3 raised to 3, uh, 3 cube of 3 plus 2 times, this one is equal to 3. So here, ma-add ba natin sila? Hindi. So our final answer here is going to be 6 plus 3 times cube root of 3. So dito may radical pa rin tayo sa last number. Now let's combine yung addition and subtraction kasi total... Um, pareho lang naman yung concept. Kung baga, nag-iiba-iba ka lang ng sign. Okay, try to answer this one. Okay, let's answer this one. So obviously, ito, pwede natin silang i-add. Okay, we will get 4 square root of 18 minus 2 square root of 12. Pero, um, simplified na ba itong dalawa? Hindi pa. Okay, here we can take out 9. Ito, pwede tayo maglabas ng 4. Pwede natin malabas yung 4. 4 square root of 9 times 2 minus 2 times 4 times 3. Our final answer, uh, hindi pa pala. 
this one magiging 4 times. Pag ilabas natin to 3, so that's 12 square root of 2 minus about here. Malalabas natin yung 4 magiging 2. So 2 times square root of 4 or 2, that's equal to 4 square root of 3. Okay? So for the first one, this one is equal to 12 square root of 2 minus 4 square root of 3. How about this sa baba? Okay, this one, square root of 27, or negative square root of 27, ito equal to sa 9 times 3. So pwede natin ilabas yung 9. We will have 3 square root of 3 minus ito that's equal to 9 times 5. So pwede ulit natin ilabas yung 9. Uh, square root of 9, that's equal to 3. E may 3 ka dito, times 3. So that's 9 square root of 5. How about this one? This is equal to 4 times 5. So pwede natin ilabas yung 4. We will have 2 square root of 5. How about ito? This is equal to, same lang sila, 9 and 5. 9 times 5 in kaysa. So that's plus 6 square root of 5. Okay, itong dalawa. And ito naman yung pagsasama natin. Okay? Sila pa lang tatlo. Sorry. Okay, this 3, pwede natin simplify kasi lahat sila may radicand na 5 or square root of 5. Our final answer is going to be negative 3 square root of 3. Negative 9 minus 2, that's negative 11 plus 6, negative 5 square root of 5. Okay. Now let's go to multiplying radicals. So you will only multiply radicals kapag pareho sila ng index. Ano nga ulit yung index? Yung nasa? labas ng radical sign mo, yung nasa taas doon, yung parang, kumbaga, exponent ng radical sign mo, kumbaga. Or kapag equal yung radicands nila sa loob. So first, let's look at this. Ito, meron kang pareho index. Kapag same yung index mo, pwede mo i-multiply yung radical nila sa yung radicand nila. Okay? Pwede mo lang i-multiply. Like this one and this one. Okay, so you'll have 5 times 7 dito sa loob. And so it is. So, bago tayo magsagot ng more examples, i-recall natin yung rules natin ng power of a product. So note guys ha, that you're in the gagawin mo is pwede mo i-multiply itong x and y. Kaya meron kang nth root of x times y dito. Okay? So if we simplify this, 5 times 7 is just equal to 35. Ito yung makukuhang sagot. Okay, paano naman kapag magkaiba yung index pero pareho yung radicand mo? In this case, pareho kang may 4. Remember your product rule, itong nasa taas. x raised to 1 over m times x raised to 1 n. Pwede mo lang i-add yung kanilang exponent, rational exponent. In this case, since naka- um, ra uh, radical form ka, i-add mo lang ba yung 3 and 4? No. Okay? Iba yung sagot nun. So, gagawin mo muna siya. Four, that's equal to 4 raised to 1 third. Fourth root of 4, that's equal to 4 raised to 1 fourth. Then, saka mo, pwedeng i-add yung exponents nila. So, kailangan naka-rational uh, naka-rational exponent na form siya. Okay? So, this is equal to paano
denominator. Least common denominator of 3 and 4 is 12. Okay, then get yung similar fractions. Ito magiging 4 over 12. Ito magiging 3 over 4. Ay, 3 over 12. Now you can add them. 4 plus 3, that's equal to 7. Kaya naging 7 ito. Pwede mo bang i-multiply itong 2 and 4? Hindi guys, ha, huwag niyo siyang i-multiply. Kasi itong 4 naka-raise siya sa 7 over 12. Okay, kasi magkaiba yung index nila, magkaiba rin yung base nila. So, hindi mo sila pwedeng simplify further. So, another way of writing this is 2 raised to 12, ay, sorry, 2 times 12th root of 4 raised to 7. Denominator, siya yung nandito sa index. etong 7, or numerator, siya yung exponent mo dito. Mag-try tayo magsagot dito ng medyo marami. Okay. So for example, if you have 3 square root of 12 times square root of 6. Okay. Pareho yung index nila. So guys, again, kapag may pareho kang index, kahit ano pa yung nasa loob, pwede mo silang i-multiply x times y and then yung index niya would still be kung ano yung nandito sa dalawa. Okay, so here pareho yung index mo na squared. So ibig sabihin, this is just equal to 3 times 12 times 6. Okay? So guys, pwedeng i-multiply nyo sila or pwede rin na i-factor uh, mo to. 12 is equal to 2 times 6, right? Times, itong 6 mo dito. So makita mo na na pwede mong ilabas itong 6 kasi this is 6 squared. That's equal to 3 times 6 square root of 2 which is equal to 18 square root of Kung multiply mo naman to, magkakaroon ka ng 3 times 72. 72 is equal to 36 or 6 squared times 2. Kaya ganun lang din yung makukuha mong sagot. So how about if... Meron tayong mga um what? Okay. Square root of 15 n squared times square root of 10 n raised to 3. So, pwede mo na itong ilabas, pero pwede rin na, na isama mo muna siya. Tapos mamaya ka na maglabas ng mga um, perfect square. So, here we have 15 times 10 or 150 times n raised to 5. Okay, minultiply ko lang yung sa loob guys ha. 15 n squared times 10 n cubed. I'm assuming marunong na kayo mag-multiply ng mga ganito. Monomials lang to. Okay? Ano sa tingin niyo yung magbibigay sa atin ng um, perfect square dito? This one is divisible by 25. 25 times 5 is equal to 150. This one times n raised to 4 times n. So, ano mga pwede natin ilabas? 25 and n raised to 4. I sorry, hindi pala 5. I think 6. 25 times 6. So this is equal to five, uh, square root of 25. So that's 5. Square root of n raised to 4. 4 divided by 2. So n raised to 2. Ang may iwan sa loob is 6n. One more.
negative 4 square root of 28x, 7x cubed. So, pagsama natin sila. Since pareho lang naman na, 2 ang index nila. 28 times 7, x times x cubed. This one, yung 28, that's also equal to 7 times 4. 7 times 4 times 7, ito x raised to 4 lang. So, rin pwede natin ilabas dito. Ito, 7 times 7. You will have negative 4 times itong 7, kasi nilabas na natin yung 7 times 7 or 7 squared, times x raised to 4, square root of x raised to 4, that's x squared. And yung 4 din. So lahat pala, pwede natin ilabas. Kasi perfect square din to. So that's times 2. Simplify natin. 14 times 4 is to 6. 56. Negative 56 x squared. Final answer. Okay. How about if meron tayong Ganito. Okay? So, ang gagawin lang natin dyan is i-distribute natin ito sa dalawa. Okay? We will have 2 square root of 5 times square root of 6 plus 2 square root of 5 times 2. Okay? So, here, um, again, i-multiply lang natin yung Nasa loob, 5 times 6, kasi pareho lang naman sila ng index that's equal to 30. Plus, how about this one? May constant tayo, 4, and then square root of 5. Masisimplify pa ba ito? Hindi na. So this is already the final answer. So pag nakita kayo ng ganito, i-distribute nyo lang siya. Distributive property. How about if we have yung mga ganito? 5 minus 4 square root of 5 times negative 2 plus square root of 5. So, ang gagawin natin dito is FOIL method lang. Okay, so first, negative, uh, 5 times negative 2, that's equal to negative, <coughs> negative 10. Outer, that's equal to 5 times square root of 5. So, 5 square root of 5 lang. Inner, this one times this one, negative times negative, maging positive lang din. 8 square root of 5. Negative 4 times pos uh, negative 4 square root of 5 times positive square root of 5, that's equal to negative 4 times square root of 5 times square root of 5, that's equal to 5. So, ito magiging equal to 20. So, pwede natin silang i-add. Negative 10 minus 20, that's equal to negative 30. How about itong dalawa? Pareho silang may square root of 5, so that's plus 5 plus 8, 13 square root of 5. So, ito yung final answer natin dyan. Negative 30 plus 13 square root of 5. Negative. Negative 3 square root of 3x plus 4 times square root of 3x minus 5. 
Kung nalilito kayo, pwede nyo i-substitute to as ibang variable. Let's say u is equal to square root of 3x, pwede rin. Makukuha nyo rin naman yung tama sa to. Pero para pinahaba nyo lang. So just use FOIL method here. First, this one times this one, that's equal to negative 3 times, sorry, baka akala mo. Square root of 3x times square root of 3x, that's equal to 3x. Okay? Outer, this one and this one, that's equal to positive 15 square root of 3x. Inner, ito and ito, that's equal to 4 times this one plus 4 square root of 3x. Last, 4 times negative 5, that's equal to negative 20. Simplify natin to we will have negative 9x plus 19 square root of 3x minus 20. So, paulit-ulit lang yung concept, di ba? As in yung radicals, para lang siyang um, exponents. nag apply pa rin yung rules niya. Bago tayo mag-division, um, I want you to try and simplify kapag merong mag -eto. So kanina, lahat ng examples natin is equal yung indices, right? Parehong mga square root. Parehong 2 yung index. How about kapag mga ganitong problems? Habot ka pag may ganito ka. Here, pareho yung base mo. Okay? So, para ka lang rin nagmumultiply ng monomials mo, except this time, meron kang rational na exponent. Okay? So, here, ang gagawin lang is multiply yung constants. 2 times 4 times 4. Okay? That will give us 32. 2 times 4, 8 times 4, 32. Tapos, m raised to sum no, kasi nagmumultiply tayo, so sum ng exponents. 2, 3 halves, and negative 2. Here we will have 2 plus 3 halves, negative 2. Okay, so as you can see, ito, pwede na mag-cancel kasi 2 minus 2. May iwan sa atin is 32. Iwan sa atin would be yung 32 and bakit ayaw mo magsulat? 32 m raised to 3 halves. Or this is also equal to 32 m cube numerator m raised to the numerator and then squared or second root. Okay, so in general, pag nagsisimplify tayo, dapat um, lahat ng exponents should be positive. And then, wala kang, pero sa division eh, dapat wala kang um, rational exponents or fractional exponents sa denominator. How about this one? Okay, so again, pareho yung base mo. So just multiply the coefficients first. So 3 times 1, 3 lang yan. B raised to sum of the exponents. 1 half plus 4 thirds. Anong sum nila? Common LCD is 6, least common denominator. Ito magiging 3 over 6, so that's 3 plus. Ito magiging 8 over 6, so that's plus 8. Answer dito is 3B raised to 11 over 6. Or, in radical form, that's 3, 6th root of B raised to 11.
Okay. So if we have this one, notice na ito ba um, yung 2, imumultiply ko na agad sa coefficients. Let's say may coefficients dito. Imumultiply ko na ba agad itong 2 sa mga coefficients na to? No, kasi itong 2 mo is actually also raised to 1 over 15. So ito, power of a power rule, i-distribute mo yun sa kanilang dalawa. Okay? Ito magiging 2 raised to 1 over 5 times a raised to 2 over 5. So ang coefficients natin dito is 3 times 4, that's 12, times 2 raised to 1 over 5. Pwede ko ba ito i-multiply sila? No, kasi magkaiba yung base. So hindi ko naman pwedeng i-add lang yung exponents or what. And magkaiba yung index nila or magkaiba yung power nila so hindi ko rin sila pwedeng i-multiply. Maybe. Okay, may question from earlier. Three B raised to five. Ah, ang apala. Okay, this one hindi ko na simplify. Simplify further kasi eto may malalabas ka. This is also equal to B raised to six times B raised to five. So malalabas mo ito B raised to six. You will have three B times six root of B raised to five. Okay, good. Ha, um, now, let's tina natin sa A. A raised to 2 fifths. Ito na yung gagamitin mo. 2 fifths plus 3 fourths. Times B raised to 1 half plus 1 fourth. Here you will have 12. Ganyan pa rin yan. Okay, ito yung coefficient mo. Kumbaga, constant coefficient mo. Times A raised to anong common um, denominator nilang dalawa? That would be 20. 20 divided by 5, 4 times 2, that's 8. Plus 20 divided by 4, that's 5 times 3, so 15. Times B raised to 1 half plus 1 fourth, that's equal to 3 fourths. Pareho pa rin to, copy lang, 12 fifth root of 2 times A raised to 8 plus 15, that's equal to 23 over 20, B raised to 3 fourths. Okay, so since maraming radical sign, ang pangat naman tingnan, and mas maganda siya isulat this way. Okay, so take note guys, ha, kapag nakapower yung buong monomial mo, or buong expression mo. Kailangan mo i-distribute yun. Okay, may nagtanong. Ma'am, hindi po ba ma-i-distribute yung A raised to 2 sa numerator and denominator na... Sorry, hindi ko na-gets yung tanong. So numerator and denominator na ay exponent to guys. Exponent niya to. Nakuha ba? Ani, sorry, hindi ko maano yung tanong. This is the exponent. Parang meron kang 2 a squared raised to 1 fifth or fifth root of 2 a squared. Kumbaga. Nakuha ba? Masagot ko ba yung tanong mo, Lexus? Okay. Um, recall nyo, uh, ngayon mag-simplify lang tayo na mag-simplify ng rational exponents or ng fractional exponents. 
recall na kapag meron kang exponent, for example, uh, x raised to negative one half. Okay, ayun na sila. X raised to negative one half, kunwari, that's equal to one over x raised to one half. Okay, but I suggest, kunwari, nagsasolve kayo, um, wag nyo na muna siyang ilagay sa baba kasi ganun din eh, isasubtract mo rin siya mamaya sa, kunwari, meron kang Okay. Huwag yun na muna siyang isulat such that x squared over x raised to 1 half tapos y 2 cube at 2 over 3 raised to y negative 1 <coughs> over 3. Ay, positive. Kasi ganun din eh. Isasubtract mo rin siya ulit dito kasi nasa denominator siya. So kapag magsisimplify kayo ng ganito kunwari expression na may o nga, no? All right, ito pa pala. Here, pwede natin ilabas ito. This one. Kasi that's equal to... Ay, hindi. Kasi mas malaki ito eh. Ay, hindi. Tama pala. Kasi may ganyan ka, ba? Ay, sorry! Ano ba yan? Ay, tama. Yeah, pwede mo pala siyang ilabas kasi this is going to be equal to 20 and then a times 20 times a cube. Okay? So, ang may iwan dito, well, pwede rin naman natin siyang ilabas kaso ang mangyayari, may nagtanong kasi. Um, wait lang. Pwede naman siyang ilabas but then we will have something like a raised to a cube. Sige, lipatan na natin siya this way. Pwede rin naman. B raised to 3, 4, 3. Okay? If you want to simplify this one. Pero kapag i-simplify mo siya or ilalabas mo siya, kailangan mo siyang isulat this way. But if you want to maintain na um, kapag naka-rational exponent siya, ipagsasama mo lang lahat ng A, ipagsasama mo lahat ng B, regardless if may malalabas ka. Nakuha ba yung difference? Kasi kapag ito kunwari isulat natin siya ng rational na nakalabas to, para kang may a times a over 3 over 20. So parang ang pangat na matingnan. So kapag naka-express siya in rational exponents or fraction na exponents, ipagsasama mo lang siya. Pero kapag naka-radical ka, pwede mo siyang i-labas. Though technically they are equal la. So, depende na lang rin sa choices. Pero mas, ito, simplified version. Itong nandito is simplified version ng nandito. Pero kapag radical yung hinahanap, then you have to separate them. Okay. So, kapag meron tayong mga negative na exponents, wag niyo muna siyang gawing Huwag niyo muna siyang ilipat sa denominator. I-simplify niyo muna. Then kapag yung simplified, meron pa ring negative, saka niyo siya ilipat sa denominator. So for example, here we have this one. Gawin natin itong 4. Kung meron tayo nito, ang x natin would have negative 1 half plus 2. Okay? Negative 1 half plus 2 times y raised to 2 thirds plus negative 4 thirds or simply minus 4 thirds. Okay? So this is going to be equal to x 
raised to one half, ah, sorry, raised to three halves, kasi ito magiging um, four over two. Okay, simplify lang to, that's equal to positive three halves times y raised to negative two thirds. Okay, now this is equal to x over y raised to two thirds. Okay, pag nilagay na natin siya sa baba, mawawala na yung negative sign. Pero bawal na meron tayong fractional dito sa baba. Okay, so... Um, para mawala ito, okay, what we do is we multiply it by what? By this one. Okay? Um, para mag-rationalize. Y raised to sorry, may nagtatanong. Nawala ba yung screen share or is sa isang tao lang nawala? <coughs> Actually guys, I'm gonna cut it here para isang lesson yung rationalizing radical expressions. Tapos pati na rin yung pag-simplify ng, um, ng mga parang may rational expression kumbaga. Pa, uh, what do you call this? Paano ba? Okay, nakashare pa dito. Ihiwalay na lang natin para mas organize. So yung mga merong x plus square root of x, tapos meron kang mahabang polynomial dito or any expression. So pagsama na lang natin. So basically, hiwalay ko na lang yung division. And then after that, so yung next lesson natin would be dividing radical expressions plus complex and imaginary. I guess next time, mag weekend mornings na lang talaga tayo kasi hindi ko talaga kaya ng gabi para hindi ako nagpa-function compared kapag morning because <laughs> I'm a morning person. So mag-weekends na lang tayo pala. Okay, thank you guys for listening.